in three, four. Right? All right, let's start. So I think many participants would have joined now. So let's start. My name is Amit, and uh, I'll be discussing with you about AWS Code Commit today. That's what the webinar is for. And today we are going to see what is Code Commit, how does it work, what's the role it plays in entire DevOps and AWS ecosystem, and uh, we'll see a little bit of a, a demo as well, okay? Uh, my name is Amit, as I said. I'm based out of Bangalore, and I've been in the industry for around 18 years now. And um, I've mostly worked on DevOps, DevOps related technologies, cloud, containerization, um, infrastructure as code, Everything in DevOps, right? So just wanted to introduce myself. So let's talk about code commit. Before code commit, let's talk about um, version control systems. So how many of you, right, by a show of hands, or you can send me an emoji here. Is it possible to send reactions? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't see reactions. But anyways, uh, you can send me a message on the chat. How many of you have not heard about or worked with version control systems like Git, SVN, Perforce? How many of you have not worked or aren't aware about it? So I get three, four, All right, so people who have responded that you are not aware about these tools, the version control tools, what is your domain, right? Just a one or two word or three word domain. In which domain do you work? This question is for only for people who have not worked on Git. All right, so I see people from various domain like sourcing, airline, retail, supply chain, telecom, service desks. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so a version control system is a a software version control system, I would say, is a methodology using which you track the progress, the history, and the changes being made to a software code base. Okay? If you are not dealing with any software code base, 
if you don't plan to deal with any software code base like python or scripts or java c c plus plus things like that then you are not going to use version control system much in your life okay for those who plan to work in software projects they will see a lot of version control system and its uses okay so what is a version control system a version control system is a methodology using which you can track the changes and the progress the history of a software code right so let's say um let's say <clears throat> i have a team and i write code and my team writes code right if i give them a directory let's say this is a directory and within this directory there are some files Right, there are some files. Let's say there are three files. And let's say I have three developers, so three people who are going to work on this project, who are going to write the code for me, right? If I allow all of them to access this code repository, which is maybe a directory on a file share or somewhere, maybe a Google Drive, and ask them, hey, go here, make the changes that you want and develop the project, right? It's going to raise a lot of problems. What I'm trying to achieve is all three team members working together, contribute, contributing to a single code base. But what is going to happen is, although they all work on the same code base, there will be problems like, you know, maybe developer A will be deleting developer b's changes maybe developer b may accidentally override developer c's changes or they may um, make changes where the other developers are making so it's not really collaboration it's going to be a lot of chaos where teams are going to overstep on each other's work right so that's going to happen how do we solve that what do we do is we use a version control system. So instead of storing the code in a plain directory, we use something called as version control system. It's a tool which allows you to host files and allows the developers to access the files with proper permissions. And whenever they make changes to the file, the VCS remembers what changes an engineer has made or a code contributor has made and it also doesn't allow other software developers to override on those changes or edit their changes or uh, it doesn't allow the other engineers to interfere with the previous person's changes right so it allows a, a collaborative software development environment where each developer can contribute to the shared project. It also tracks the changes, right? So if you use a version control system, and if you, one month down the line, if you want to see, hey, five months back, we made a release. I want to see who made the changes to that particular release and who added this particular line in my code. Then VCS is going to remember all the changes coming to the software project and it's going to give you complete information about the history of the project. Okay, I know it was a lot of jargon. You guys might have understood it. You guys might have not understood it. But let me show you an example. The example today is, well, the example today is a Well, before I tell you the example, there has to be a little bit more explanation. So there are various version control systems, right? So this, uh, there is a way on how you set up version control system. For example, generally what happens is the most popular version control system is Git, G-I-T, Git, right? You might have seen this word all around you if you are a software developer or if you are into software development. So what do you have? You have a central server 
where the source code is available. It is hosted. It is stored. The developers, they download this source code on their local system. Right? They download their source code on the local system and work on that piece of code. Once their code change is done, they are happy, there are no errors, they will push the changes to the server. Okay? Now the commands that they use, the operations that they perform to download, to make the changes, to push back, they're all git commands. Okay? But the server has to run somewhere and it has to ensure that uh, it can host files. It has to ensure that it can get um, permissions. You can define who can access what files, who can access the repository, who can download, who can push, who can make changes and things like that. Right? So the Git is underlying tool, but there are a lot of ways with which you can host the server. For example, you might have already known about GitHub. So GitHub is a Git hosting service, a Git repository hosting service. So you can upload your files to the GitHub and then it becomes your, your project, software project, and then it can uh, you can work with it to get a project done. Right? Similarly, GitLab, Bitbucket, there are many. We are going to talk about code commit. Code commit, right? Now, code commit is also a Git based server, a hosting service, which is managed by AWS, managed by Amazon. What it allows you to do with it allows you to get the source code on code commit, and then it makes the code available for other AWS managed services. For example, all your DevOps services like code pipeline, code build, code deploy. So your code source code can be available there. You can also get this uh, code of the code commit from, uh, sorry, if you have your source code in code commit, you can also use the code in cloud formation, in AI ML tools, in infrastructure as code tools, and at many places, wherever source code is, uh, is expected, right? So I will show you how to create code commit repositories, how to store files in there, how to work with the files. Okay, that's the goal of this webinar. All right, so if you log into your AWS account, of course, if you are doing AWS, then you need to have an account. If you are already working with AWS, then you might already have an account or you can create a free account. Uh, you can get almost all the services free for one year if you create an account. And you can every year you can create a new account using a different credit card if you have multiple cards. Okay, all right. So when you log into your AWS, this is my dashboard. And it may look different than yours because I use many services regularly and my cost and all will be as per my usage, but for you it may be different. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to click on services. And on the left hand side, you can see major category of the services like storage, migration, media, the database, and all that. There is a service called service category called developer tools. Right? If you go there, this uh, category contains all the AWS managed services which can be used for your software development. Right? So if you just go through this one, you can have an IDE for writing code. If you want to write Python code, what you do generally, you have a local IDE like, like, uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, or maybe Notepad, or maybe you have uh, PyCharm, or any other IDE for writing Python code, right? 
You don't need to have a local IDE. If you just have a laptop and you have AWS account, you can create your own IDE, right? Uh, you can also get your own CLI, okay, to run some commands like Python commands and whatever. Uh, you can store your artifacts, so you don't need artifactory or anything. You can store artifacts. So you have all the developer tools available here, and we are going to focus on code commit. So if I go to developer tools and code commit. You can see a dashboard. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, hold on a sec. I was in a wrong region. Right, so if you go to developer tools and code commit, this is what you see. On the left side, you see, uh, it's not just code commit. This place or this dashboard is for most of your development resources like code build, code deploy, code pipeline. Similarly, you have code commit. All these tools are part of the software development pipeline. The code commit is the first component of the pipeline. Okay. All right. So code commit and you have repositories here. So right now I do not have any repository. Let's say I want to store some code on code commit. What I'm going to do? So I can create resources in my managed services by multiple ways. First is by using the console. Like I can come here, I can click on create repository and interact with the with the form here, which will be presented to me, and then create the service or create the resource. Or I can use AWS CLI. So I have AWS CLI on my uh, laptop here, and I can use AWS CLI to do certain things, right? So I'm going to show you uh, both ways to create a repository. So first, let's click on create repository here. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's say demo console because I'm creating this from the console, right? Demo console, description is optional. I don't need to give it keys or tags are optional. I don't need to give it and every other thing is optional. I just say create. Pretty quickly, you get this. So now let's go again to developer tools and code commit. And let's click on repositories. You see demo console is created. Okay. And it's an empty repository. There is no file in this repository. So now there are two ways to interact with this repository. Either I use this GUI interface to add a file or to create a file. Right. Or so I can either directly edit the files here on code commit on the server, or I can download the repository on my local machine, change the files, add the file, and then push the push the files or changes back to VCS, back to code commit. Okay, so this is what we can do. Now we just saw how do we create a repository using uh, the web console. Let's also create a repository using AWS CLI, okay? Now, how many of you have used AWS CLI before? So I'm sure, okay, there are two people who have used people so quite a few people who have used so AWS CLI is nothing but a command line interface to your cloud account and you can perform any operation on your AWS cloud by using the AWS CLI similar to console okay so let me show you how you can use CLI
to use CLI, first you have to tell AWS CLI your username and password, right? So the command is AWS configure. Let me zoom in. Just one second. Yeah, right. Okay. So I'm going to run the command AWS configure. And by running this command, I can give AWS my username and password. Now in AWS, you don't generally reuse your username and password. You don't want to give your username and password because it has a lot of permissions. What you do is you hand out your access key ID. So you can go to your account and go to security credentials. And go to access keys. Create access key for CLI. So this is the access key and the secret, which you can use with AWS CLI. So I copy access key. You can, there are many resources which, which can give you details about how to create access key on AWS CLI. So don't worry about me not explaining what I did here. You can read about it later. But yeah, you need a access key and a secret key. So I give the secret key, my default region, output is YAML, all right. Now my AWS CLI is connected to my AWS account. If I run AWS, so there are a lot of things. If I just say AWS help, you can see what commands I can run. Right, so I can run all these commands. Uh, Athena, Artifact, AppSync, AppStream, AppRunner, Batch, uh, Chatbot, many things right cloud nine uh cloud trail cloud front all these are services which i can manage using aws what i'm looking for is code pipeline oh sorry code commit and you see code commit is a sub command for aws so i can say aws code commit but since i don't know what I can do with code commit, I will type AWS code commit help. Then it will give me some more options. So for example, there is a command called create repository or delete repository or get repository, which gives more details about the repository, right? And in the repository, I can create a file, get a file, uh, things like that. So I can do whatever I want here. The only thing that I'm going to do just for the demonstration purpose is create a repository. AWS code commit create repository. Now, how do I give the inputs to this command? We have to see. Create repository and then I have to give the repository name. I can also give description as an optional thing, tags and many other things, but I don't want to. I'll say repository name and the repository name is let's say demo cli so AWS code commit create repository repository name demo cli and i get a good output here repository is created and if i go to the console here and go to repositories i see two repositories Right, so this repository was created by AWS CLI and this is created by the web console. Absolutely no difference between the repositories based on from where you create them. They're both same. Now both the repositories are empty. They have no files in them. You see here, this is a empty repository. There are no files in them, empty repository. So in this console repository, let's create a new file. Let's say I want to create a file called uh, myfile.py. 
Okay, py is generally an extension for Python files. If you have used Python or software development, you would know what I'm talking about. And I'll say import OS. I'll just write something and print. Hello world. That's it. Right, this is a file which I want to create. And I need to give the author name and the email address. Who's creating this file? So this is me. Name is, I just give like this. Right, and if I look into the repositories, if I go to demo console, you see there is one file here. When it was empty, it was showing me some text, but right now it has one file here, right? Now in the CLI repository, it is empty. So it gives me this connection steps dialog, but at the bottom, it shows me that it is an empty repository. Now coming back to here, I told you that I can either I can use a UI to manage files of the repositories, or I can download it on my local machine and then make changes and then push it to the remote. Okay, so let's do this with the CLI. So to work with the repositories, once you have the uh, repositories on your code commit, then since these repositories are based on Git, you have to use a Git tool to work with the repository, right? So you can say, hey, Git, and then clone, and then the URL for the repository. This command is going to download your repository to the local system. So right now, I say Git clone, but how do I download this repository? So I need to run the command git clone, and this is the URL for the repository. Code commit tells me this is the URL. Right? Let's try that. It's not going to work. It will ask me for a username and password. What is the username and password? I don't know the username and password. I'll cancel this. So it won't work. Okay. So what to do now? So before even I can clone, I need to set up Git credentials. Right? So there is a documentation on how can I create Git credentials, but I will show you how we can create credentials. So I'm going to use identity and access management. Right? Go to users. And this is my user account. I go here, security credentials. And this is where I created the access key. And similarly, there is a HTTPS grid credential for code commit. Right? I generate credentials. And this is my username for Git. And this is my password for Git. So let me copy them and close them. I will do a clone again. And again, I will be asked for username password. So let's keep the username and let's keep the password. Hopefully it works. Right, it works, it did not, did not give me any error, but it gave me a warning that you appear to have cloned an empty repository. So now in this directory, if I do a dir, I will see a demo CLI, right? If I go into this demo CLI directory, there is nothing, no files, because it is an empty repository. And now I can add, it, add a file here. Now to add the file, I have to use Git operations. Now this class is not about Git, 
Okay, I'm not going to get into how Git works, what are the commands for Git to, to make changes to your repository. That I have covered many times in previous webinars. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is just create a file and push it to the remote repository. Just to show you. I'll just create a new file. It's also a Python file. And I save it and I say git. All right, done. So done. I did whatever I need to do. And if I go to the repository, demo CLI, if I refresh this, I see my text.py is updated. And it is nothing but the file that I created and pushed here. Hello world from CLI. Right? So this is how you can work with the repository. Now, once you create the repository, you don't have the clone URL. But if you go to repositories list, you will have the clone URL here. You can copy the URL for HTTPS and clone it. There are other ways to clone. So there is SSH, HTTPS with GRC. Uh, you can read more about those or, or maybe in some next webinar, I can talk about those. But as of now, HTTPS is something that we saw. Okay, once you are done with the repositories, you can also delete them. So you can just in the repositories display, you can check that and click on delete repository. Please note, if you delete a repository, all your files will be gone from the repository. You cannot retrieve them. So please be very careful with such destructive options. And yeah, this is my demo CLI and um, my, okay. So on the left-hand side, there are many other things that you can see or look about this repository. For example, commits, you can see the history of changes that were made to this project, to this repository. For example, I made only one change to this demo CLI file. Uh, the change was named first file. This is the ID of the change. And uh, you can see everything. If there are more changes made by other developers, you will see a long list of changes made to the, uh, to the repository. So this is how you can see the history of changes to the repository. Okay, there are many changes, many other information like pull requests, um, branches. These are some advanced concepts of Git. We talk about them in the next uh, in the next webinars, but yeah, some other time. Okay, all right. If you want, you can also delete the repository from CLI. So AWS code commit delete repository. I can do. And that repository is deleted. If I go to repositories, I wouldn't see any repository here. Okay. All right, so this is what I wanted to talk about. We can have around 10 minutes of Q&A. You guys will get your recording. Okay, I think uh, Skill of Right team is going to share the recording with everyone. And uh, you guys can refer to it later. Okay, don't worry about that. Questions? Uh, 
again as i said if you don't plan to get into software development you won't have to deal with code commit or any other developer tools question is after we create a repository how to give access okay so let's create a repository so by default if a developer or any user has a, a permission to access git repositories right? for example let's say the policies right so you can restrict access to code commit based on these you can take away you can you can create a user and assign them a role which does not have any of these policies or you can assign them a read only policy or a full access policy based on what kind of access you want to give them right And you can also restrict the access to individual repository with this, with the repository ARN, if that's what you have in mind. If we delete the repository, then we can create again from CLI. Yes, you can create again, but any files which were in the repositories will be gone. From Naga, we have GitHub account to maintain our code, then why we should need AWS developer tools? Is it because all tools in one suit? It is mostly a matter of preference and convenience. If you have GitHub and you have, you're quite invested in GitHub, you have a lot of automation around, you have GitHub actions and everything, then you don't need to use code commit. Code build and other tools also work with GitHub. But if you don't have GitHub, to begin with and you start using AWS DevOps developer tools, then it's the easiest thing is to use code commit. Can you show a use case with parallel updates and config? As I said, this is not a Git class, unfortunately. I have already uh, taken a couple of webinars where we talked about branches and conflicts, merge conflicts and um, things like that. Maybe in one of the next webinar, I can talk about it. Right. So Ananya, Anaya, sorry, Anaya, please uh, keep tuned in for next webinars. You will get the recording. Don't worry about it. For checking branches of current project, we can check using git command. Yeah, of course, you can use git branch for checking the branches. You can also see the branches here. I don't have any branch. There should be only one branch. No branches right now because there is no code. But yeah. How do we resolve any conflict during code merge? Okay, answer is the same. You, I mean, in some other session, I can talk about it. What is the difference between S3 bucket and code commit? S3 also have version control, then why should I go with this code commit? Okay, S3 is your object storage, right? Um, it's, you can store code in it, but you have individual files version there, right? It's like it's like having a file in the file share 
and you create copies of file based on the changes that you are making in the file. It's not exactly changing the file itself. Okay. And yeah, you cannot treat the entire S3 bucket as a single unit. When you have version control, individual files have their own versions, right? One file can be at version one and another file in the bucket can be at version 10. But in code commit, all the files are treated as one unit. A repository is treated as one unit and each repository has its own versions. So all the files have different versions. And with Git, you can use it in CI and CD, so you don't need to use uh, S3. Again, if you are not going to do software development, then stick with S3 bucket. You don't need code commit. What are advantages and disadvantages of AWS compared to ADO? ADO, uh, do you mean Azure DevOps? And with AWS, you mean AWS developer tools? Well, it's just two different flavors of the tools. I would prefer Azure developer, uh, Azure DevOps over AWS because it has more features. I think project planning and everything is also there, uh, which AWS does not provide. And I think Azure DevOps is also quite feature rich and convenient compared to AWS. Question from Prasenji. So AWS is virtual computer. AWS is a cloud provider. You can create a virtual computer inside that, like EC2 instance. But there are a lot of other managed services that are provided by AWS, a lot of platform as a service or a lot of software as a service. So, yeah. All right, so I don't see any more questions. So let's wrap it up then. Thank you for your time. Today we talked about code commit, which was a pretty easy and relevant topic. Uh, in the next sessions, if you have some preference, do let the Scale Up Right team know uh, on which specific topics you would like to see a webinar and we can arrange for the same. Uh, in the next week, we have a webinar for another topic. Yeah, I think if you have, would have registered, you would have got the invite for that as well. So if you are attending that as well, I'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Take care. You will get the recording soon. Bye-bye.